friends, it's part two of my short series on Tokyo. If you haven't seen part one, then you might want to click here to see it first. But if you have, then what are we waiting for? Let's do this. So before I even went on my trip to Japan, I went ahead and asked some of my friends for some suggestions on what to eat or what to do when I get there. And one of the answers that stood out was the word hugu. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. How do you pronounce it? I wasn't too familiar with the dish yet, so I did a quick Google search on it and... Uh -huh. It turns out that hugu has a reputation for being quite deadly if not prepared correctly. Hugu is Japanese for puffer fish, blowfish, or blowfish. You know, this guy. Puffer fish has long been a Japanese delicacy known for its thrill factor. Preparing it is no small feat, as the smallest of mistakes could lead to the most fatal of consequences. Every chef who wishes to serve hugu needs to train for at least three years before they could qualify for a license to serve it. The puffer fish contains a poison called tetrodotoxin in its internal organs, especially in its liver, ovaries, eyes, and skin. Which is why these parts have to be cut out without being burst so as not to contaminate the rest of its edible parts. A lethal dose of this poison causes paralysis, reaching the muscles that allow you to breathe, leaving you conscious, but helpless. Currently, there is no known antidote to pufferfish poison. So does this guy still look cute to you? Hmm think about it. But okay, there are still a lot of places in Japan that specialize in fugu, and plenty of people still eat it and stay alive. My friend Ken said that it's not dangerous at all, so I decided to put it to the test. I met up with my friends Ken and Erica at Shinjuku Station. Right now we're yeah. in Shinjuku, near Shinjuku Station. Uh, Shinjuku is the uh, like, busiest station in the world in terms of the number of users. So I don't know, like, you know, millions of people use Shinjuku Station every day. There you go, he's the expert. Then we headed straight to this restaurant called Hugu Ichiro. I hope I'm saying that right. We were up for a full course dinner that night. All Hugu prepared six different ways. Here we go. Erica, it's your first time to eat it too, right? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. Yes? I am. To get poison. Yes. Guys, what's this mystery jelly? Please tell me. <laughs> Please tell just me. Try. Just try, just try. Oh my god, they want me to die know. right away. I don't even know. Oh my god. It turns out that this is called nikogori. This is jellied puffer fish. It reminds me a lot of Chinese jellied pork. It was a good appetizer to start off the night. It's light and it prepares the palate for the courses to come. Next up was the sashimi, or the hugu sashi, which is said to be the most popular way of having hugu. So this is where all the buildup was leading up to. The raw fish is cut into paper thin slices and served with ponzu, which is a citrus based soy sauce. Let's see how it went, shall we? <laughs> she squeezed the lemon. It doesn't have much taste. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to like translate that chewy when I eat. Chewy. Uh, chewy. 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 Yeah. I got it, yeah, chewy. I'm gonna spread the lemon, just as Erica did. I'm gonna take one and dip it in the soy sauce. This is it guys. <laughs> To be honest, I couldn't say much in that moment, mostly because of how it completely overturned my expectations. Not that it was a disappointing experience, it was actually quite interesting. You see, I didn't do any research on the taste beforehand, so I was thinking, poisonous fish, must have a kick, right? But when I tasted it, it was like, whoa, this is actually quite subtle. The hugu sashi was quite delicate and it didn't smell like fish at all. One of the first things that I noticed about it was its mouthfeel. It's pretty chewy. In fact, that's all I could say in that moment. But my advice for you if you ever try fugu sashi is to take your time with it. It's not the kind of dish that would hit your taste buds right away. In fact, if you're not paying much attention to it, then you might think that it's pretty bland. But when you continue chewing on it and you reach for the second or third slice, you might realize that there's something about it that you can't quite describe. I'm told this is called umami. It's clean. Fugu sashi tastes very clean. I think that's one way to describe it. Next, we had the fugu karage, which was the fried fugu. 
It had a crisp outer crust with a soft center. This one was more salty. It tasted like chicken. The fourth way we had our fugu was yucky fugu. Grilled fugu over charcoal. It had a smokier taste and the meat was firm and juicy. Finally, we had the last two. I'm combining these two because it's like a two-in-one kind of thing. The fugu chirinabe and the fugu zosui. <sighs> Hope I'm still saying that right. First, we had the fugu chirinabe, which was a hot pot featuring fugu as its main ingredient. Then afterwards, we poured rice and eggs into it in order to make the fugu zosui, which was a great way to end the meal. Okay, so nine people died in the, in the past 10 years because of the food poison. Now, it could be you. <laughs> Just, yeah, that, that one, you're, you're gonna be really unlucky at this. <laughs> I'm glad that I lived through this to post this video. My friends are alive too, thank goodness. Erica and Ken, if you two are watching, thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. Huge shout out to our friend Mihiro. We miss you, girl. Without a doubt, this has been an interesting culinary experience. It was something new for me with good company and food that clearly has had a lot of care put into the preparing of it. That's not something I'm gonna take for granted. With that, I'm signing off, guys. See you guys in part three. If you like this video, then don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit subscribe. More adventures to come, guys, soon. And since you've made it this far into the video, go ahead and have another fun fact. How come KFC is so popular in Japan during Christmas? So I just found an article and it says, this is not my opinion. Okay. This is not my opinion. <laughs> Disclaimer right there. It's, it's, okay, I will explain. So apparently, the like, turkey, you know, like turkey is very popular in the US, especially during the Thanksgiving, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not in, it's not very popular in Japan. And then like the KFC in Japan, uh, they decided to uh, like make turkey popular in Japan here. And they said, okay, let's celebrate Christmas with chicken, like Christmas. You know, it's turkey, KFC turkey and chicken. It's very commercialized. So it's a, it's a giant marketing campaign. Can you show them the Colonel Sanders again? Uh, <laughs> it does look like a Santa Claus. Yeah, so that's Colonel Sanders as Santa Claus. <laughs>